Well, hey there, my friends. This is a great podcast all about olive oil. Olive oil is one of my staple foods. I consume olives, green and black. And you'll, with this interview, you're actually going to learn the difference between them and nutrient density and things like that. Um, and I consume a lot of olive oil. One of my favorite things is a Mediterranean salad that I consume all the time where I will cut up cucumbers. I will cut up um, some tomato, some bell peppers, put in some hearts of palm, some artichoke, put my extra virgin olive oil from Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club that I'm going to talk about here. Um, so rich in polyphenols. And I put in some olives, green or black olives. Sometimes I'll put in some cheese in that. Sometimes I won't, depending on you know what else I'm having for protein. And then I put basil, oregano, thyme, rosemary, these Mediterranean herbs that are super rich in antimicrobial and immune supporting nutrients. And they smell great. They taste great. And I absolutely love this salad. I, in fact, I probably have it, I don't know, four or five, six days a week, almost every day. Honestly, I, I make something along the, the, these lines and I absolutely love it. And I've been looking to do a podcast all about olive oil. So I'm excited for this one, guys. If there's anything you can do to improve your health, you know, we talk a lot about reducing sugar, but you know, right up there is getting rid of vegetable oils and nut and seed oils. These things are super toxic for your body. They are high in omega-6 fats. They're typically damaged. They're very fragile. And so they become damaged because they have, they're, they're, they're polyunsaturated. So they have multiple double bonds. And when they're not kept um, fresh, right? Then they become oxidized and they become rancid and they drive up inflammation in the body. And we know linoleic acid, for example, which is kind of your key omega-6 fat that comes from plants. Um, high amounts of that drives up inflammation, can, can increase insulin resistance, um, just causes a lot of different problems in the body. So we got to reduce that. And where do we find high amounts of that? Corn oil, soybean oil, safflower, cottonseed oil, things like that. And unfortunately, the olive oil industry, even though we know olive oil is an amazing fat, olive oil is rich in oleic acid, which is a very stable fat. And it's also got a lot of good polyphenols, things like hydroxytyrosol, as well as oleopuin, if I'm saying it right, and oleocanthals, which are very powerful. These polyphenols act to reduce inflammation in the body. They give the olive oil flavor, they're very antimicrobial. They have antiviral benefits, um, particularly um, hydroxytyrosol has uh, pretty awesome antimicrobial properties. It's effective against respiratory and GI infections, you know, things like that. And so some powerful compounds that are in there. However, most olive oils on the market have been sitting out too long. And so they've actually lost it because the, the polyphenols have a shelf life, right? And, and so the further, the more time that takes place, the more we lose these polyphenols. So if it's been sitting out for six months to a year, we're losing that. Um, and so we're not getting as much of those. And then also these oils are oftentimes contaminated. They, they are oftentimes to increase profits because olive oil is more expensive than canola oil. They will do like a 70% olive oil, 30% canola oil, and they won't label it guys. I'm telling you, this is stuff that happens. You want to make sure you know where your olive oil is coming from, that you trust what's taking place there. That is why I love fresh pressed olive oil. And that is why I got TJ Robinson, who's called the olive oil hunter on the podcast. And so guys, the fresh pressed olive oil club, which was developed by TJ, he's again, the olive oil hunter. Um, is a home delivery service of ultra premium, fresh pressed, independently lab certified, 100% extra virgin olive oil. They source top quality, super flavorful uh, extra virgin olive oils, and they deliver them quarterly from the harvest to your doorstep. And so TJ was one of America's top gourmet chefs. He's really passionate about food and tasting and things like that. He's been all over TV um, and he's well known. And he started this club and uh, he goes through a story in his podcast. And I learned a lot, just not, not only about um, TJ, but also just about how olive oil is produced and processed, but he has made the world's finest artisanal olive oils. 
And we have a special offer just for my community that he put together where you just pay $1 to help cover shipping. It's yours. And, and you get a $39 bottle um, of his artisanal olive oil that's super rich in polyphenols. He harvests these every three months from different parts of the world. And you get it for just a dollar. Um, and it comes again, direct to you. So all you have to do for that special deal, guys, is just go to getfresh89.com, getfresh89.com. And you have no worries about the offer. It's totally bona fide. If you want to continue in the club. So the cool thing about the club is basically they just charge your month, you know, every or car, your card every three months. And then you get three new bottles, right? And he goes over how that works. Um, and they're the freshest bottles from, again, different places in the world that are producing olives at that particular time. So we go through that in the podcast. And uh, for some reason, you know, you didn't want the bottles, you know, you can always cancel, but you'll get a chance to try one of his specialty oils again for just $1. And you just go to getfresh89.com to check that out. And so with that said, guys, you guys are going to love this podcast. You're going to learn so much about olives, olive oil, producing olive oil, what you can do with olive oil. Should you cook with olive oil, right? What, how, to, how to look for good olive oil when you go to the store. You're going to learn all of that. So you guys are going to love this. If you haven't left us a review, now's the time to do it. Five-star review on Spotify or Apple iTunes. That way we are able to reach more people and impact more lives with this information. And let's go into the show, guys. Well, here I am with TJ Robinson from Fresh Pressed Olive Oil. So TJ, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited and happy to be here. For sure. Well, I've been really enjoying your olive oils. Olive oils, oh. you know, one of the most nutrient dense things you could put in your body. Amazing polyphenols, great for brain health, heart health, reducing inflammation in the body. So I love putting it on, you know, we make big salads and uh, we put it on our meat, things like that. And uh, just so good. And uh, you're an olive oil expert. And so let's yes. talk about why you started Fresh Pressed Olive Oil. The sure, olive oil club. Sure. So um, as a as a user of our fresh pressed olive oil, you you understand a lot of the differences um, between um, fresh pressed olive oil, which is the, the type of olive oil that I sell versus the um, commodity product, the bulk commodity yeah. product. And, and you've recognized those differences. So uh, for me, recognizing those differences started on a trip to Sicily. In about 2005, I was uh, working for the Food Network at the time, and I had an assignment to be in Sicily. And while I was hanging out in Palermo, I met this really cool family and they invited me to their family's olive harvest. So olives are a fruit. They're harvested one time a year. I happened to be there in October. So I was like super excited to um, get invited to, to check mm -hmm. out, you know, what what olives look like on the tree. I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. So I grew up in the South, not really knowing much about olives. <laughs> I really probably didn't even understand they were a fruit at the time. Um, but anyway, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. They Most were. people anyway. don't know that they're a fruit, right? <laughs> yes, Most people should... would think that they're a vegetable, but they got the seed it... in the middle. Right. Exactly. And they should be treated like a fruit yeah. juice, I later right. learned, which we can go into. But anyway, I was invited to this harvest party and this was a traditional family harvest. So like it was the weekend. So all the cousins and the, the family came together on the weekend. They brought their Italian Fiat pandas and backed up in the grove. And, and we, we started early in the morning before it got too hot under the Sicilian sun. And here we are. I'm on the side of a hill covered with these beautiful beautiful olive trees that are hundreds of years old, staring down at the Mediterranean. And I'm like, man, this is a pretty good place to be. This is pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, so we worked really, but then the real work began. We started picking the fruit, um, beating the, the trees with sticks um, and because the, the, the olives would fall on, on these um, mat nets basically mm -hmm. um and then we would roll them into bins and then take the bins and pile those in the cart and finally at the end of the day we um we made our trek to of course there was a fun lunch with with oil and you know it was, it was yeah. really great so it was, it was like fun to be steeped in sicilian culture because olive oil is so deep in the italian culture um so anyway end of the day and and we'll get into more details as we go through the interview but end of the day we go to the mill and we take our fruit we we stand in line there with our with our bins of olive fruit um and i don't know we probably collected 20 30 bins over the, the course of the day as a group there are probably 15, 10, 10 of us maybe and um 
anyway, um, so we, we wait in line. We put our name on the, our, our ticket and we wait in line with a lot of other Sicilian families because this is like a time of year celebration. This is a harvest party, yeah. basically, that's happening. So we go and we, we wait and we eventually it's our turn and they, they take our fruit. And I, of course, I want to see the process of how it's made because, like I said, I'm from the South. I know how apple cider is made mm. and I know the difference between fresh pressed apple cider and that boxed oj yeah. or boxed apple juice i get in the in the store i understand the differences but i never really had that for myself so anyway i um at the end of basically them making the the olive oil we we all get um cups like this little white cups mm -hmm. and we walk over to the spigot uh coming off the olive mill and inside the glass uh, this um juice that looked like wheatgrass really fresh pressed wheatgrass mm. with a little foam on top it was just brimming with color vibrancy aroma i was like whoa for just visually and and you know smelling it i knew like this this is not something I've had before. Like, what's up with this? How's this been kept from me? So anyway, I, I took a, a swig and it was very robust. It was mm. fruity and green and grassy. It was also bitter. Uh, it yeah. was also spicy. And I was like, what is all of this about? So that is when that was kind of my aha moment where I realized that even as a foodie insider working in New York as a chef and with the Food Network and really exposed to lots of great food products, this product had been kept for me. It really I'll keep it clean, but upset me um, mm. <laughs> that, you know, I was an American and, and, you know, we, we were only producing at that point about 3% of what we consumed in America, in the U S. Um, and so 97% was being imported. Uh, we were the dumping grounds of, of, for really bad oil in the U S uh, in those years. And um, so anyway, that was my aha moment that there was this amazing product, yeah. this sauce that mother nature had made for me from this beautiful fruit that I'd never even tasted. So that is what um, led me to start the club, my own, you know, becoming a fanatic about olive oil, training my palate as a taster, et cetera. Yeah, so interesting. And what's the difference in artisan produced extra virgin olive oil versus mass produced olive yes, oil? Yes. Like obviously, that, you talked about the color that, and things like that, but like what is yes. what's going on there in the mass produced that yeah, so, doesn't equal what's happening in the artisan produced? So a lot has to do with the fruit. Um, there's a lot of um, financial things that go on in the olive oil world. Um, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of producers, because they sell their oil by the leader as a commodity on the market in the Mediterranean, their goal is to produce the, the most oil possible from the fruit they have on the tree because they're selling yeah. it by the kilo to the the local co-op or, or or whomever um or the big bottlers so basically what happens is as the olive fruit ripens on the tree a super early harvest oil which would be an artisan style oil or an artisanal style oil is typically harvested super green it's going to have about 10 percent mm. of olive oil inside 90 percent weight it would be pit and the exterior, mm -hmm. the pulp and, and that sort of thing. And water, about half of the olive is water. So that just goes away. So you, you're left with about 10% of oil. Now, if you're a commodity producer, you let the fruit hang on the tree and there's this kind of magic window that is that kind of begins and and lasts depending on you know where they are and temperature and you know how much water they're getting etc that lasts for a couple months let's say uh, about two months well at the end of that two month harvest window your olive may have it'll turn black it'll go from green to black mm. and when it turns black typically uh, you'll have 20 up 20 to 30 percent of olive oil inside the if that's harvested and pressed as oil you're going to get more of a buttery style oil mm. that's more of a commodity style oil um so there's the fruit side of it so there's the yeah. financial side so if you're a farmer who's got bills to pay and you're selling by the leader you let that same fruit hang on the mm. tree an extra two months you got double the oil 
you're making double the money to pay your mortgage and to pay your, you know, for your kid's right. college. So like, I totally get it. Um, but there are crazy people like me who come along and say, no, we want the health benefits of that green fruit. And mm. this, the green, the whole green fruit kind of thing started in Tuscany, uh, which is in northern Italy, like the northern rim of, of where a lot of the oils um, are produced in Italy. Um, and and what ha there, it tends to frost uh, quite early because of their high in the mountains. So they have a custom in the Tuscany area in, in Italy to pick the fruit really early before the frost, because the frost will damage the fruit. So they started this trend of this early harvest style of olive oil and now we can find that in in other places in the world or ask for it someone like me who says i'll pay you double or triple commodity price because i want all the health benefits the mm. polyphenols the antioxidants i want flavor in the oil uh so you know that that's so that's the fruit side of it yeah. And then I don't know if you're a car guy or not, but I, I was thinking this morning about a really good analogy um, for the the um, mechanical side of it. So there on the artisanal side of production, you have um, mostly mills that are on the farm where the olives are grown. So they have complete control of the process. On an, in an artisanal production of not waiting in line, not keeping the fruit waiting for days to get pressed, et cetera. They have complete control, but also their machinery. These um, families are fanatical. Um, so you would think of them as like Formula One cars or NASCAR, yeah. like their level of machinery to keep oxidation really low in the mm -hmm. production process, which actually preserves all those polyphenols that we talked about. Um, it's quite different than, let's say, the Hondas out there, which I love Hondas, don't get me wrong, but the Honda mills, which actually produce like good standard middle of the road they just they're just meant to get you you know mm -hmm. point a to point b but they're not the nascars which are just yeah. every little detail is uh dialed in on for maximum mm -hmm. flavor um and and aromas and polyphenols and all those sort of things so sorry to be long-winded on yeah, that, that one. <laughs> is, that's the art of it and so what you're saying is that you know when you go to the grocery store you see green olives and black olives typically Green olives turn into black olives. Green olives are early in the ripening process. Black olives are Correct. kind of fully ripe, the fully ripe fruit, kind of like a, almost like a, you know, in some cases, green apples turn into, you know, red apples in some cases, right? Yeah, um, so uh, absolutely. And you can taste that. Like if you have a yeah. brined olive and, and like when you go to the olive bar yeah. and you taste green olives, like mm -hmm. the green cherries, like, yeah, a little more bitter. Um, but also, um, like you said, not as fatty, where yeah. if you look at the other end of the spectrum, like the Kalamata olives mm -hmm. or the um, any of the oil cured olives, you'll find like a very fatty mouthfeel. Yeah. And that is just more fat. Um, but, you know, in, in the oil side and some olives can be used for for table fruit and for olive oil. Right. Um, typically, uh, they're kind of divided, but I, mm. I'm a, I'm a fan of table fruit that's yeah. made into olive oil because it has a lot of flavor, um, uh, when it, when it's harvested really early. Totally. I mean, my, my family and I, we, eat, we make this, well, I, I particularly make this Mediterranean salad all the time with like cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, artichoke, hearts of palm, olives, yes. right? And we'll just yes. go back and forth between black and green. And then we put your olive oil all over it, some lemon juice and herbs. Oh, so gosh. good, right? Some, You're cheese, some feta hungry. cheese in there <laughs> sometimes, you know? So yes, yes. Yeah, no, so good. It. And and your way of eating, like you're a big promoter of keto Mediterranean yeah, or right. Mediterranean keto, which yep. I honestly believe has the potential to explode. To me, yeah. that is takes two diets, which are just loaded with benefits and just crosses them in a way totally. that is just like the perfect diet, <laughs> you know, and but Americans, we, we, we want the benefits of the Mediterranean diet. Um, but one of the key levers in that diet is olive oil and, totally. and a lot of it, like Greeks, for example, I think they consume like 26 liters of a year yeah. or something like it's a lot of like they consume a lot of olive oil it's a big 
part of they're their getting probably twenty twenty five percent of their calories from olive oil. Absolutely, a lot of veggies, a lot of olive yeah. oil, um, and, and and but but really, those people are getting fresh oil once mm. a year. Those people are yeah. harvesting the fruit themselves. They're in complete control of that. So they're really getting the, the and, and I guess what I was going to say, there's the healthy fat side of it, which most olive oil is a, is a healthy fat, like yeah. absolutely supermarket or not. Um, but there are all these sub benefits when you get a super high quality level olive oil with all those layers of polyphenols um, right. that are just the antioxidants, the anti-inflammatory properties. I mean- you're the you're the doc, so you're you're more, way more on the health side than I am. But um, it it just so happens that fresh olive oil is one of those things that not only tastes incredible, but is also super healthy for you. So I love it totally. when those two cross each other because it's like yes, um, yep. you know, usually it's the bad stuff that tastes so good, <laughs> but. The, Fresh olive oil is, uh, so is, good. A miracle. is a miracle. So what you're saying too is that the green, the green olives have more polyphenols. As it ripens more on the tree, it reduces the polyphenols, increases the fat content. Correct. Correct. So yeah. the um, in Italy, let's just say there are 550 olive varieties alone. Mm. So we all know as wine drinkers, we understand the difference between a Merlot and a Cabernet or um, a, a, a Chardonnay and a Savion Blanc, right? So like we understand like grape varieties as a fruit, like when we ask for a specific wine, what we're gonna get, like if we ask for a Savion Blanc, we're gonna get something that's more tart, we're gonna get something that's more steely. Um, and with olive varieties, it's the same thing. So basically there are these kind of main branches of olives, but as they were growing in different regions in Italy and in Spain, really all over the Mediterranean basin, they ad adapted to their climate uh, over mm. time. So essentially, there are these different varieties that have different levels of bitterness and spiciness and, and flavor. Um, you talked a little bit about color earlier. Um, color is not really an identifier of quality. Um, in fact, people, uh, some People have been shown, like in that that interview that was done on 60 Minutes about the fraud mm. in olive oil, was showing that they can add colorant to mm. olive oil to trick the consumer about what they're buying, trying to think yeah. that they're getting it from green fruit, but they're not. Um, they're and, and you know, going back to you know why I had never tasted fresh olive oil. Um, you know, going back in those days, a large percentage of olive oil on supermarket shelves that's labeled extra virgin is really not extra virgin. Um, there, it doesn't meet the tasting panel that that it goes through. Uh, it wouldn't meet the qualifications as extra virgin. And and talking about tasting panels and, and color of olive oil. Uh, when professional tasters taste olive oil, they actually taste out of a blue cup. Um, I don't have one with me here today, but that blue cup actually disguises the color of the oil. So it doesn't mm. fool your brain into thinking it's a little more green or that sort of thing. Um, and, 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 Every olive, not every, but a lot of olive varieties, um, some of them transmit color to the oil more than others based on chlorophyll and the weather. And so it's really not, uh, color is not a real indicator. Um, but we'll, we'll mm. go through what the indicators are and what you want to look for and how to shop for it uh, later, later in the podcast. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, also in your quarterly selections, I've noticed that you have kind of a blend of different varieties yes. of olives. Yes. So I guess, you know, naturally you would think you would just do like one specific variety of, of olive per, right. per oil, but you blend them. Why do you do that? That's right. So certain farms like this quarter, there was a 100% Coratina uh, yeah. that is from uh, from from Italy, from southern mm -hmm. Italy, um, the heel of the Italian boot. This is a, a beautiful um, single estate, uh, single varietal olive oil. And sometimes yeah. it works out. And that's what I go for. Typically, though, I will do a blend um, and blend in, in the grocery store is, is usually a bad term. That's meant means that it's blended with canola oil right. or some other kind of seed oil. So 
you know, be careful with that word. But on the artisanal side and the kind of producers I work with, um, we uh, use different. So my background is a chef. I'm, I'm an ex uh, classically trained chef. And I think of olive oil fresh pressed olive oil as a sauce that mother nature made for me. Mm. So it's like a, a, a musician who's um, composing music and looking for different notes. And when I make my trio each quarter, there's a mild, a medium and bold. Um, I use different olive varieties to produce these very harmonic blends. So mm -hmm. sometimes the, the, and sometimes it's just based on what's on that farm, you know, like at Cutrera, he has mostly Tonde Blea uh, olives, but he also has no Chilara. So he's got that. I, he makes different vats for me, different, different stainless steel tanks. I go through and taste. I look at fruit in the field and I say, that's what I want. That's the ripeness stage. Um, and Cutrera is one of the top producers in the world. Um, but uh, so I like to blend some of his Nochilara with his um, Tonde Ablea because it just makes a beautiful perfume, a beautiful nose um, with really green grassy flavors, nice mild bitterness and a touch of spiciness. So, um, yeah, so it's my, I, it's my, I guess, uh, chef That's background, <laughs> it's, it's the art of it, right? Yeah. It's like being a, a whiskey blender or a right. winemaker. Um, it, it's, it's fun to get to express, um, and to achieve this mild, medium and bold oil, um, you know, each quarter. Yeah. So there's synergy there that, that takes place. Now That's you right. also put together a pressing report that you send yes. basically every quarter I why do. why do you do. do that? Why are you, right. you know, writing these pressing <laughs> reports? Because you put a lot of work into well, those. Yes, absolutely. So I, I know you've probably looked at these when, when yours yeah. arrive and, and check them out with your family. But and I've got it here on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so this is about a 20 page uh, document that we put a lot of love into. It's kind of old school, like it's printed. It's not yeah. fancy color. Not it's many people just... are putting out printed <laughs> newsletters these days, right? So. I know. I know. It's really old school. And, and I like it that way. You know, the club started in about 2005. And I, I, I just like it. There's something kind of vintage. It's got a lot of black and white photos in it mm -hmm. with me with the producers because it's about relationships right and my yeah. club members get relationships and have relationships with these producers it's like visiting a local green market and you get to know your vegetable vendor or your flower vendor yeah. or your bread guy it's the same but from around the world so each quarter i go and what makes the club really special is that we fly the oils in by jet so that's super key and two, we follow the global harvest. So just like I had that uh, Sicilian harvest party in October and November, um, I go to a harvest party in Spain in January and February. And then I go to the Southern Hemisphere where they have the opposite harvest season from the Mediterranean, just like in our winter up here when we're getting, you know, fresh produce, uh, tomatoes from Chile and Peru, uh, that's because they're the opposite side of the equator. So my next um, mm. trip in, in May for my June shipment, I'm in Chile, which has okay. beautiful olives um, uh, there. And then the next trip is Australia. Australia. So that's that's for our September shipment. I'm usually there in July and August for that, uh, for their harvest. So this global harvest, um, immigrants took cuttings of olive trees and and hid them in the lining, the stitching of their suits hmm. and ties when they left the old world for the new world. They wanted to take a piece of their grandparents with them and their great great parents and their parents, you know, just on and on yeah. because these olive trees are huh. were the center of religious right. ceremony they were the center of the cuisine they're part of the culture so they took these cuttings and and when they hopped on the boats to chile from greece and from italy and spain they they put them in their suitcases they hid them and when they and landed they in chile wow. they and you know they, they planted olive trees and so then the whole thing began so the same thing in australia a uh, huge greek population i think maybe the second largest outside of Greece, mm. maybe in Australia. Um, so, you know, it's a, it, it's really interesting to see how this special Mediterranean olive fruit with these amazing healing powers have, have made it ar around the world. Cause this was like how they were treating skin conditions, you yeah. know, two, 300 years ago, how they were, you know, um, 
using it as sunscreen. I mean, it was just like everything, you know, medicinal, mm. internal, external. It was, uh, it's very, very important to people uh, from the Mediterranean. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Are people growing them in the United States? Mm. Do we have the right temperature? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. In California. Yeah, so they're California. grown in three places, California, a little bit in Arizona and a little yeah. bit in Texas. Yeah. Um, but mostly it's centered in California. Our yeah. production has grown. I, I would imagine we're up to maybe around 10% of our U.S. consumption uh, is being grown in, in Cal- mostly mm. in California. The, the, the olive varieties are pretty limited on what's being grown there in mass. Um, they, there's a, there's kind of a new style of planting olive trees that are in hedge rows, um, that make it more efficient for harvesting, um, and, and, and more efficient for the farmers, um, for, for drip irrigation and that sort of thing. Uh, so there's a lot of that that goes on in California. So we're, and, and those oils arrive on our shelves much faster than the ones coming from the Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Um, and, and the, the, it's really hard when you're in the grocery store to, to figure out, yeah. you know, a lot of times we judge by fancy bottle or, you know, we just stand there. We don't really know. We judge on price. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's good to be, to be armed with some good information. Totally, so totally. we appreciate are, you getting it out there. <laughs> absolutely. Well, you know, I get my olive oil from you, but some people out there that are going to want to go and try to find some at a grocery store, what are some tips they sure. can look for to make sure they're getting something pure? Absolutely. So you first thing you want to look for is a harvest date. Every olive oil should have a harvest date. So for example, this one, Italian harvest season 2021. So this was harvested in December. So a couple months ago. Um, yeah, a couple months ago. Uh, so this was our December selection. So always look for a harvest date. Um, they usually put some kind of weird code on there that says like it's from five different countries of origin. Usually for me, that's a bad sign. Mm. No one can take, put love and care and passion right. into a product that's been through five countries. Mm. So um, one of the things you'll notice is this is a glass dark bottle. Yeah. Dark is key. Um, even if it's plastic um, and, and, and a lot of the bulk uh, supermarket olive oils these days has stepped up their game a little bit and gone to dark uh, bottles because one of the things that kills olive oil is light temperature mm. and time and oxidation so um fluorescent lights in the grocery store kill olive oil so always buy in a dark bottle so look for harvest date always buy from always buy a dark bottle um another thing you could look for is a store where you could taste the olive oil before you buy it so you actually um you know know what to taste for you're looking for that fruitiness the bitterness and the spiciness that peppery pinch that yeah. hallmark of uh of polyphenols which yeah. which you know indicate all the antioxidant power and those yeah. unfortunately those polyphenols drop by 50% in the mm. first six months after pressing. So gotcha. most oil in the U.S. is um, that, that you would find in your local markets is, is not fresh. Um, it's just sadly, it's not fresh. So, um, so you know, going to a place where you could taste the oil to see if it has those hallmarks would, would be key as well. Yeah, that makes sense. And I've also heard that even if it's labeled 100% or just olive oil on it, and they may not have in there, there could be 20, 30, 40% corn oil or canola oil or some sort of seed oil um, that we know is toxic and inflammatory. You know, olive is a fruit oil, right? When you see something Absolutely. that says vegetable oil, you actually don't want oil from vegetables. You want oil from certain fruits, avocados or olives. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. They're the high fat fruits. And yeah. uh, you want to avoid the seed oils and the vegetable oils, but sometimes they put it in there. Yeah, it's really tricky and they hide it. So look for that word blend. Also don't mm. buy a product called light olive oil, light thinking it's health conscious. Light yeah. just means it's been uh, chemically stripped of all mm. the polyphenols and all the antioxidants. So it's this clear oil. Um, and, and extra virgin olive oil you find in the Mediterranean kitchen, 
um, the, the, that's the main oil you see. Like you don't go into a Sicilian grandmother's pantry and uh, whether she's grilling, whether she's sauteing, whether she's drizzling it on food or salads, she's got extra virgin olive oil, the real deal. Um, there's been lots of studies on cooking with olive oil. There's lots yeah. of myths out there about you shouldn't eat olive mm. oil. Well, honestly, if an olive oil is of super high quality, like the Fresh Press Olive Oil Club, it's very high in antioxidants yeah. and is super stable. Yeah. Uh, there's some research studies I can send you, you can put in yeah. your show notes, but olive oil is actually very stable fat. Um, and, and so don't be afraid to cook with it. I yeah. typically, I have a, a tip related to that. Um, when, when I'm making my eggs, for example, in the morning, I put my pan on the stove and I do it very intentionally in this order, but I put my pan on the stove. I warm up my pan. I, once the pan is hot, I add a little olive oil. And then I immediately put in my eggs. Mm. I do the same with chicken. Heat up my pan, wait for it to get hot, add the oil, and then immediately add my food. Why do I do that? I don't want the oil to sit there on the stove and mm. oxidize with the heat. Like it's just not great for any oil yeah. to sit there and oxidize on that the heat sense. while you, you know, fiddle with, you know, getting to the fridge and interrupted by the kids, yeah. you know, while your oil's over there starting to smoke. You, you know, it's that. That's, uh, you know, so um, hot pan, oil, food immediately, and it, you'll have no problems. And even with my eggs this morning, I made my eggs and I just, the fl on my plate, I, I drizzled the leftover um, oil from, from my olive oil from my pan on my eggs with a little salt and pepper. And just the aroma coming off my mm. plate of that yep. fresh oil, it was like, you know, it's just so good. And that tells me, my nose is telling me and my palate is telling me that oil is still in perfect condition. It's mm. exactly like it was from the bottle, even though I just cooked with it. So um, please And that's don't because be you put your eggs on there quickly afterwards because the heat will get rid of some of those polyphenols. Olive oil does have Absolutely. great oxidative stability. A lot of people look at these Absolutely. smoke point charts and olive oil doesn't have like a super high smoke point Correct. and it's not a saturated fat, it's monounsaturated fat. So the idea was that, you know, it couldn't really handle heat, right? It would combust, you would lose, um, yeah. you know, the polyphenols and you would lose the benefits and it could even create a trans fat. But the research yeah. has shown that has remarkable oxidative stability and it's really the oxidative stability, meaning its ability to remain stable when it's That's got right. these forces that are um, these oxidative forces coming against it, like heat and, right. uh, and olive oil has this remarkable stability. Now, my thought was when you cook with it, it remains stable, but you lose polyphenols, right? Because they're helping buffer the oxidation. You, you do lose a little bit, but honestly, our oil, so our oils are third party tested. Mm -hmm. So every quarter, you know, you're getting extra yeah. virgin olive oil. Not only do you have me, the micromanager and my team following every step of the process, like mm -hmm. on the ground with the producer as the oil's being made. And we take out all the links in the chain. Like that's the problem with bulk olive oil. Like there are too many links in the chain. God, I don't even know how many links between you and your grocery store but with us i work directly with the farmer i put it on a jet i ship it directly to your house like there's no room in yeah. there to muck it up basically and and no one to get their grubby fingers in there and try to make mm. profit like it's basically um you know a, a real sincere product um that's high level of authenticity so what we do we send the oils to the top lab in italy they taste the oils. Not only do they do the organoleptic where they're looking for fruitiness, they're looking for bitterness, they're looking for spiciness, and they actually say there are no defects in the oil. Defects come from bad fruit, mm. uh, bad harvesting, yeah. dirty mill, etc. Like all those defects, a professional taster, when they smell an oil, they will immediately say, Oh, here we go. This defect, this is out. So all of our oils are 100% extra virgin and certified by a lab, not only in that perspective by the tasting panel, but also by um, the chemistry panel. So we also have the fruit checked, um, the actual olive oil checked, that it meets the chemical parameters for what is extra virgin. Um, and a lot of the big bulk bottlers, it may be extra virgin when they bottle it. But by the time you buy it a year, 
six months, a year, two years later on a shelf after sitting in fluorescent light, it's mm. not anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, getting back to fraud in olive oil, you talked a little bit about, you know, being duped with adding seed oils and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, there has, there have been a lot of fraud um, and, and UC Davis has done some studies on this. Uh, major media has reported on it. Um, I will say that, 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 they're trying to do better. We're trying to do better as an industry, yeah. but American consumers, a lot of them want to pay the lowest dollar possible right. for the oil and the producers, you know, it, it just, there's a lot of costs that are involved with producing an authentic product. Right. Yeah. So, um, as if, and, and I'm always one of those people who vote with my dollars and I want to put the very best thing in, in, in my body, um, when, when it comes to healthful oils, especially, which, you know, have a lot of interaction with cellular membrane and gut health mm. and brain health, all the things you mentioned. Totally. Um, that so this is a great kind of health hack that's just really easy like it and and not only easy but tasty um, because people buy a lot of weird stuff in the grocery store they 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 buy bottled dress dressings and bottled that have hidden sugars and hidden bad oils so definitely like making a simple vinaigrette like you said at home with just yep. a squeeze of olive oil like I even take the small bottle of oil uh, every quarter I I have a little flask as well, but uh, I sneak this in my pocket when I go to my favorite Greek restaurant oh, yeah, and I, and I drizzle my oil on and I ask for yeah. extra lemons for my water and I squeeze that on my salad and I'm not digesting, ingesting like weird stabilizers and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so marinades using it as a sauce, you know, we, we talk about, um, you, you talked about like grilling food or just baking something and like a prime example, <laughs> we have this fancy thing. Thanksgiving dinner and and we live in a, a condo building so my wife Megan who's an amazing cook took a plate down to the to the, the people that were working the front desk on Thanksgiving and she made you know quite a few different things but anyway the one item that got comments the next day uh, as we left um, will said, what did you do to those green beans? Those were the best mm. green beans I ever had in my life. What did you do to those, Megan? <laughs> and Megan was like, it was actually pretty simple. It was Herco Bear green, green beans fresh yep. from Trader Joe's or wherever you mm -hmm. shop. She simply steamed them in a pot, I don't know, maybe five, seven minutes. She took them out. She drizzled them with a little fresh pressed olive oil and put a little salt on them. And that was it. Like Simple. it's literally a sauce that mother nature made for you. Yeah. And that's how Italians, you know, you, you think about, um, simple Mediterranean cuisine, they leverage the power of the mm. ingredients. Like they don't need a million ingredients to have these, you know, mm. aha flavors. Um, they just, you know, simple food, great ingredients done well. And, and most families, they use a family of four. They go through a bottle a month. Um, which which works out really well because they get three bottles every every quarter, so it's about a mm -hmm. bottle a month. Um, usually, people that that's more for the for the heavy user and family. The um, the the singles and the the couples out there they like the smaller trio, which is this 250 ml bottle, and this typically lasts those folks about uh, about a month as well. So uh, so about the time they wrap their their um, Italian oils in March is the, the exact moment when the Spanish harvest hits and they get their Spanish oil. So they have those mm. for March and April and May. And then in June is the Chilean harvest. So fresh from the Southern hemisphere, they get these with our summer produce, they get the Southern hemisphere, fresh oil for that, yeah. all of our bounty. So, you know, as you know, it just, um, it's a kitchen hack and a health hack of yeah. fresh olive oil. So <laughs> I'm happy to have people like you out there sharing, sharing this message. Um, there that finally the major media is catching on. There was a great study or a great uh, quote in the wall street journal recently that said, don't sleep on this game changing ingredient. Mm -hmm. When it comes to olive oil, the younger, the better vibrant, flavorful Oleo Nuovo, 
which is fresh oil, is a pantry pick-me-up. You should purchase pronto. So I really appreciated that from yeah. the Wall Street Journal. And then the New York Times, uh, talking about shopping tips for olive oil, they recently said, the world of olive oil is murky. Here's help for the home cook. Don't try to parse every word on the label. The keys to good flavor are seeking out the freshest oil and using it generously. Olive oil should be poured lavishly and used up quickly. Experts say that freshness, more than color or price or place of origin, determines its quality. So really good quote from the New York Times. So the word is definitely getting out there. I mean, we got a lot of people beating the drum uh, about, you know, fresh, the powers of fresh, fresh olive oil. I don't know if you read about this um, or heard about it this week, but both my, my grandmother and my, my mother, my grandmother and my mother called to say, TJ, you got to watch the news. I'm like, he's like, uh, we're on commercial break. I'm like, I don't really watch the news, but I'm going to go find, there's like, there's a segment coming up on olive oil. And I was like, really? Um, But I guess there was a major study released out of Harvard this week about Hmm. um, the long-term effects of a small, I think it was a half a teaspoon a day, lowered your risk of heart disease, stroke, cancer, like almost by a fifth. It was like 20% reduction. Uh, So anyway, if you could find that study and put it in your your show notes, that would be really cool. Because I, you know, there, these studies of of the health benefits of olive oil is ongoing, like there are places all over the Mediterranean and the US um, who are being funded, because all these um, uh, compounds continue to be identified like that spiciness, that peppery pinch, that that's oleocanthal that's akin yep. to ibuprofen. It's, it's got yeah. the, the, the anti-inflammatory properties. Um, so it's pretty cool to be part of a, of a, um, of a product and be so focused on it and, and to, to continue to see evolution in the, in the health benefits. It's really mm. cool. Mm. So each of those unique polyphenols that are in there, give it some level of flavor, particularly what is it, the hydroxytyrosol <laughs> and the oleocanthal, right? Those are the exactly. kind of two ones that you can distinctly taste. Exactly. And those are actually called out on our lab reports. So I yeah. mentioned that our oil is sent to a lab. So for club members who are interested, they want to know about the polyphenol level. And because our oils are raced here by jet immediately after harvest and then shipped directly to your home, there's very little um, drop in the polyphenol level mm. from the week or so after it's harvested and when I get it tested to when you receive it in your door. But typically our oils will range anywhere from 300 to 500, 600 mm. parts polyphenol. So especially with the bold one, uh, this is a this is a Coratina this quarter, which is known to be a bold yeah. oil. Um, we had a little rain at harvest time, so it dampened the polyphenols just a little bit. Because I always say Mother Nature owns 51% of this company. <laughs> so she's yeah. always the boss. But, um, but anyway, uh, this is still a very big, powerful, bold oil. Like you're going to feel mm. those polyphenols. They're like a Szechuan peppercorn on your tongue. You're going to feel them dancing and little numbness on your tongue. I mean, that's what really spanking fresh Mm. olive oil should taste like. Um, So look, if you're interested in in those reports, um, you're welcome to ask for them and you'll get those every quarter for the mild, medium, and bold. You'll know which one's the highest polyphenol. Mm. We have some members that are like the IPA crowd. I don't know if you're a beer person or not. I'm not a big beer person, but um, there's the IPA uh, the, that are like super hoppy, like they're super, mm. super hoppy that only like these big, bold beers. Um, well, we have some people like that with olive oil. Like I want three bottles of the bold every quarter mm. because all I care about That's is freshness and polyphenol. So, <laughs> and I totally get yeah. that. Right. Um, so, so we have a lot of members who do that and we happily cust- customize uh, oh, people's nice, yeah. shipment, shipment for them. So yeah, it's, um, 
you know, I have to say it's one of those products that you really have to taste it uh, yeah. to, to understand it. Um, so what we've done, um, our way, our mission, we send out about 3,000 sample bottles every quarter. Mm. Um, and the reason we do this is to educate consumers on what real olive oil tastes like, what fresh olive oil tastes like, real authentic olive oil. And so we, we, we've we earmarked uh, some samples for yeah. your list listeners this is right. a, a, a you cannot get this on our website um, but essentially we want you to try the fresh pressed olive oil in your home I think you should take out the oil in your pantry to find some espresso cups or, or any kind of cups you have a couple spoons and do a, your own head-to-head -head taste test between what's in your pantry and and a fresh pressed olive oil you're either gonna get a you'll get a full-size bottle for a buck uh, so one dollar there's like no risk um, there's no like I guarantee you don't have to buy anything moving forward. You can cancel at any time, but you'll get one of these three Italian olive oils uh, that, that our club members are getting along with the tasting notes that tell you all about the family that made the oil and how, why I selected it out of the thousands available in Italy um, and, and give you all the tasting notes, what to pair it with milder oils go with milder foods. Um, and that's for a buck. And the only way you can get that, like I said, it's not on our website. You have to go to getfresh89.com. Getfresh89.com. And that's just for um, your your listeners, Dr. Jocker. So that's we, so nice we, of you doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So well, guys, we, $1, $1, you get a chance <laughs> to try this bottle. And uh, you're going to love it. You're going to love this olive oil. This is what I use. My family uses on a regular basis. And we use a lot of olive oil, so we love it. Bring it with us, like you said, to restaurants. You know, unfortunately, most restaurants, their olive oil is uh, not good, not good quality, right? So we will bring it with us as well. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really great stuff. So TJ, thanks so much for, um, you know, I just want to acknowledge just your commitment to your craft, number one, and Thank really you. creating a great product. And then making it affordable and an easy access for people to be able to get so they yes. don't have to try to do all the hunting themselves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Automate, automate your life, automate yeah. the healthy things, um, you know, upgrade. This is an easy upgrade. And, and really, once you try it, you, you can't, it's really tough to go back to store ball. And you're going to be that person in the group to be like, oh, what is this olive oil that they're serving me in this restaurant that is rancid? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. um, anyway, you're, you're, thank you for, for helping us get the word out. It means so much. Appreciate for sure, it. TJ. And, you know, it's what, like I said in my intro, healthy fats are so critical for good health. Getting rid of seed oils, um, vegetable oils, all these toxic and inflammatory oils, and really getting pure, good, healthy fats mm -hmm. is so critical for your overall health, yes. makes up all your cell membranes, your hormones, everything. So you will notice yeah. the difference. You'll have clearer skin. You'll have, you'll, you'll just feel better, less pain in your body, better mental clarity. You'll have less cravings, all these types of things. When you start to change out the oils, get the right healthy fats in, cut out sugars. So this is a critical step, guys. I would, I would highly recommend if um, you're not certain that your olive oil you're using is hundred percent fresh, extra virgin olive oil, rich in polyphenols, Definitely take TJ up on this great $1 offer, getfresh89.com. So check that out. And we will see you guys on a future podcast. Be blessed, everybody.